Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Virginia SBDC's Google the Great webinar series. This webinar series is designed to give you an overview of how to actually use the powerful tools that Google has created and some practical tips from a small business perspective. Each webinar focuses on one Google product. If you've missed any of our other webinars, you can find a recorded version of those webinars on the Virginia SBDC website, virginiasbdc.org, under online training. All of our Google to Great webinars are presented by Ray Sidney Smith, a self-proclaimed Googleologist and president of W3 Consulting, a digital business strategy firm that provides training on how to use various web-based technologies to small businesses. If you have any questions during the webinar, please type those questions into the chat window, and Ray will do his best to answer them. Without further ado, here's Ray Sidney Smith. Thank you, Tracy, and thank you to the Virginia SBDC Network for having me. I hope everyone is doing well today. And uh, what we'll be doing today is talking about the overloaded inbox Google solution, which is Gmail. Uh, a couple of little items of note. If you're on Twitter, you can go ahead and feel free to follow us at W3 Consulting and send messages uh, to, uh, hashtagging them uh, Google to great. And that way, I can go ahead and uh, respond to questions that are subsequent to the webinar this morning. But of course, as, as Tracy said, go ahead and, and uh, you know, make your questions uh, through the GoWebinar panel on the right-hand side panel. So uh, we're going to go ahead and talk about Gmail. And uh, Gmail is a, a product that Google created very early on in its uh, sort of statement to move out into the, the, the community and start building user base. Of course, MSN, Microsoft, had, had their Hotmail product out for quite a while. And so did Yahoo. Yahoo had Yahoo Mail. And Gmail came on to the, onto the scene. And what their approach was, was to really give, one, uh, a great deal of space to its users uh, and to, of course, rethink the way in which we thought about email. Because email, for the most part, are, is thought about in terms of uh, your inbox, uh, sent folder, and some other you know, boxes, collateral boxes below that. But in general, Google thought, well, let's not think about this from the perspective of folders because that makes us psychologically think about the physical folder, the physical file folder that sits in our offices. And as we've all noticed over the years, or hope we've noticed, is that the physical file folder is very, very different than the IT folder, the, the digital folders that sit on our desktops. See, the digital folders that sit on our desktops are not really containers of things, but nothing more than flags that associate multiple files to each other. And so Google thought, well, let's just rethink this completely by you know, you know, creating these things called collections. And what they allow you to do is to basically tag email and so that you're associating these emails with each other. But you can also associate multiple collections or multiple tags and labels, as they call them, to, to multiple email. So today, in Gmail, unlike other email programs, your primary way of, of handling email is not necessarily to move it, quote unquote, to another place, but it's to, it's to basically filter and unfilter email so that you have the appropriate context when you're, when you're managing your email on a day-to-day -day basis. So a lot of people don't particularly delete email, and Google also recognized that. And so they created basically a, a strong archive system. You know, deleting email is not particularly within the, you know, the strongest features of the system, uh, that is, they don't make it very prominent. What they, what they do is they, they give you lots of access to what's called the archive feature, so you can archive items. So in Gmail, we're going to go over you know, sort of what the interface looks like and, and why you're doing some of those things. Uh, we're going to go over you know, some of the differences and, and additional features that are added on based on other products. And then I'll show you some additional tools that are available that you might like to, like to use uh, in conjunction with, with the Google uh, Gmail tool. So the only difference that you're going to find between Google Gmail and Google Apps for Business's Gmail email program is that you're going to see these uh, the logos in the top left-hand corner of your screen. Uh, you can see that red circle around the logo. But otherwise, whether you're in Gmail or in Google Apps for Business, you'll see pretty much the same functionality. So we're going to go on into uh, the Gmail system, and we're going to get started here. So when you initially go ahead and head over to 
Gmail, you're going to go to www.gmail.com. You can also go to mail.google.com. And this is probably going to pre-log me in. I'm going to log myself out and then log back in so that you can see sort of where you're going from here. So just bear with me while I log back out so you can see the... So this is the screen you'll come to, the one that I was showing you in the, in the prior slides, what, that you come to when you initially go ahead and visit mail.google.com. If you don't have a Gmail account, uh, in the top right-hand corner, you're going to go ahead and click on Create an Account. And that will allow you to go ahead and fill in some information in order to be able to start that account sign-up process. I'm going to just walk through here so that you can sort of see what it looks like. But it's going to ask you for your name and some information about you. It's going to ask you to, of course, to choose a username which will be attached to your Gmail account. So it will be your username at gmail.com. A couple of really interesting things about the ability to create a Gmail account with the username for a Gmail account. One, it uses letters, numbers, and periods. What that means is that you're able to use your, your business domain name it's a, if it's an available username. So for instance, if I wanted to create w 3 and beyond, which is our blog, .com, at gmail.com, I could very well do that if it's, if it's available. So as you can see, I, I can put that dot, that period in there. I can have several periods in there. Uh, sometimes people want to put a period between their first initial and last name. You might want to put periods between your business name if it has two or three uh, uh, spaces. It helps to sort of helps the eye sort of figure those things out. And it also cuts down on some spam, not not all spam, but sometimes those periods will block spammers because they can't uh, get around uh, some of the technology that's associated with putting periods and other types of characters that are not just letters and numbers in there. So just remember, you can use letters, numbers, and periods. And of course, that helps you in, in uh, identifying your own brand. Then, uh, of course, you want to decide on a password. And uh, you want to make sure that that password strength shows up as strong. You can see it tells you whether the, the password is strong or weak. And you have to use at least eight characters. I recommend, again, letters, numbers, a capital letter, and then also some type of special character, which could be a, an exclamation point, a dollar sign, a period, or something like that. All right, you're going to place in your birthday. Let's put January 1st. I just put that date because it's before any age requirement issues under the terms of service. I am going to put a mobile phone. Uh, I'm going to put in a current email address. And that's going to ask me to do the much dreaded CAPTCHA. So I'm going to go ahead in here and I'm going to type in CAPTCHA and hopefully I get it correct. Uh, it's going to go ahead and ask me for a location. I'm going to agree to the Google Terms of Service and its privacy policy. So they're both here as links that you can click on and read, and I recommend that you do. And then, of course, then you have uh, the Google may use my account information to personalize plus ones to content and ads on non-Google websites. What that means is that it's using the Google uh, plus one personalization functions, which means that if you if you go to a, a Google AdWords um, sorry, a Google AdSense publisher, someone who has an AdSense account and is publishing Google AdWords advertisements on their website, those plus ones will actually make a difference on that website in terms of personalizing the ads that are displayed to you. So we click on Next Step, and Google will go ahead and attempt to create a Google Plus profile for me. If I want, uh, if I want a picture, I can go ahead and add a profile picture here. And then... And uh, at this point, it says, now you're ready to go ahead and use Gmail. So as I talked about, Google's initial concept here was to, of course, create an email system that was, was removing this idea of the physical folder, because it doesn't make any sense in the digital world. You know, in, in, in reality, we have the ability to find things much easier when we know they're associated with context. Context can be our roles in our life. For instance, I'm a brother, and I'm a son and I'm a friend, and I might be a romantic partner, or whatever it might be, but the, but the reality is, is that, you know, my, uh, it could also be that I'm, I'm uh, you know, a business owner. It could be that 
I am, you know, whatever the particular contexts are uh, of, of that particular roles in life. But then it might, might also be, uh, you know, those things that are, are phone call related, you know, those things that are business or work related. And uh, so you can create different contexts in Gmail through these things called labels, as opposed to thinking this email has to go into this folder and uh, therefore the, 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 the item is in something and not associated with something. So it's just a different way of thinking about it. And I, I know that a lot of people have sort of trouble sort of disconnecting that. But if you have questions as it relates to that, please do ask because I can, I can sort of un, you know, flush it out for you a little bit better than uh, in, in the time that we have. So, so they, they created that. But they also did two things to, to really you know, uh, sweeten the deal for you. One, they gave you the power of Google search right within your email. And there's a lot of functionality right within the, within the search functionality for, for that. And I'll show you that in a little while. And then they gave you lots and lots of space. It's this ever-expanding amount of space that Google keeps giving you. And Google keeps increasing the uh, sort of the perks for being able to get more digital space or digital storage within the account. For instance, if you upgrade from Google Documents, if you have a Google account, you have Gmail, and you upgrade from Google Docs to Google Drive, which is their new product, you then get the benefit of additional storage space by upgrading to Google Drive. Okay, so Google Drive gives you five gigabytes of storage data at, at, out, the, out the gate, but it also increases your Gmail storage limit as well. So understand that by, by upgrading particular products, you'll also get additional Gmail storage because of the capacity built in there. And when you use the Google products in conjunction with each other, some of them don't take up additional space because you're, you have overlapping product use. For instance, if I was attaching a, a Google Doc, you know, if I was emailing a Google Doc, I wouldn't, of course, being use, be using an allotment of Gmail storage because the document is housed within another Google product. So those things are helpful as well. So Gmail takes you to this initial screen, screen that, uh, of course, talks to you about the email program. It takes you through a bit of a tour. I'm going to bypass that so you don't have to uh, see that, but here we are at the primary screen, and I'm just going to go over some of the most important features. As I've talked about in past webinars, we have this uh, black bar across the top that Google has created for us, and what it does is it takes you to all the common products that Google has, and some of the not so common products that you may not know Google has. So I would check out the, the black bar, and if you're using any of the products, this allows you to be able to switch between them, or at least jump to them, very, very quickly. Google is attempting to be able to make these very seamless for you to be able to jump to and from. You, of course, have the, the Google logo, but the Google logo is really not useful here. What, what, what is most useful is actually this little Gmail item icon right below that. The Gmail uh, name has a drop-down arrow, and it actually gives you three different areas to go to. Contacts, of course, Gmail for your mail, contacts, and tasks. We'll talk about contacts and tasks if I have some time at the end, but we will probably dedicate uh, some time to that uh, in another webinar. Uh, to the right of the Google logo is your search field. And the search field, I'm going to go over some, some of the sort of short codes, but it's basically Gmail's search built into the Gmail account. So you can, of course, search all of your email the way that you would do a Google search. Okay? If you drop down arrow, inside the field, there's a little, uh, you know, See the little, uh, you might not be able to see, but there's a little tiny gray arrow. You drop down there, and that gives you the advanced search functionalities. So you can type into fields. Uh, you can select which of the labels you are dealing with. So here you might have the inbox, uh, you starred messages, uh, sent mail, and so on and so forth. And you can go ahead and filter based on those specific labels. You can uh, type into the from field to, to filter only by people from, people to meaning that messages that you've sent to someone or that you have received as a CC but was sent to someone, subject matters, uh, subject lines, uh, bodies of the message, and you can also limit out or filter away particular messages. So I can say I want messages from uh, Tracy, but messages from Tracy that don't have the words Google to great webinar. So you know it gives you these, this ability to be able to uh, you know filter out particular particular messages that you know you're not looking for. You can also look for messages that have attachments. And, uh, and then once you've, of course, created this filter, uh, you know that here at the bottom, it, uh, a little blue link shows up, and it says create filter with this search. What this allows Gmail to do is to be able to create a filter that you can uh, you know, save in the system, and it will automatically do whenever new me messages come in. 
Okay, so that can be a very powerful tool as well for filtering out lots of messages that you don't want to receive or you want to want to receive but you want them to be contextualized automatically for you, which means some messages may be set for being uh, read later. And so you may want to tag those as, you know, unread, but moving them out of the, the inbox label and, and reorganizing, reorganizing them under a read later label so that you would have a new label on your left-hand side panel and go ahead and uh, be able to check out the read later when you might have that. So for maybe newsletters, you could continually add a filter, you know, to one filter, the email addresses that you get regular newsletters from, and then that filter can just continually be updated, and uh, those messages can be pulled out so that you don't have to worry about your email inbox being overloaded with newsletters when you really want to be dealing with the substantive messages you're receiving from clients. Okay, uh, so this is the search button. So once you've t finished typing in your search, uh, you would then go ahead and click on the search button. However, for instance, if you have, have started a search and you realize that you're not looking for it in within Gmail, Google does give you the ability to go ahead and search the web. You can jump out of this screen and go directly over to Google's website to go ahead and do a, a Google search. Uh, you can hit shift, cent shift Enter. If you're on a Mac, you would go ahead and, and also do Shift Enter. Uh, so Mac or PC, you would do that. And or you can uh, just click on this drop down menu here to search the web for whatever that particular search query you were typing in. Right on over, you can see uh, my name. Uh, right here, this zero is actually associated with Google Plus. And Google Plus, you know, it'll tell me whether or not I've had some kind of interaction on Google Plus. This also allows me to be able to share via Google Plus. And Google Plus allows me to be able to share by email as well. So this is another way in which you can share email in a different way within the Google platform and within a lot of the Google products now today. So I could, I could type a message and add specific people, whether that be people within my circles, family, friends, extended people. And I can also type in a specific email address. For instance, I could type in I'm picking on Tracy this morning, but I can pick uh, Tracy, and now Tracy will get this email sent to her in her inbox, but from my Google Plus profile. Okay, so uh, different way of, of manifesting email from within the system. But uh, if if you're using the Google Plus network, that's a, a really easy and convenient way to do it. By dropping Ray, down here, yes. I just like to point out that you have to have a Google Plus account to have that show up on your screen. So some of the older users with uh, Gmail may just see their email address up where you're showing it on the screen and they, they would need to join Google Plus to see that That's particular correct. That's piece. correct. So I just, I just, yeah, I just created this account. So to clarify definitely what Tracy's saying, I just created this account and I paired it with a Google Plus profile. So you may not have a Google Plus profile in, if you're currently using Gmail and have, not, and have already created the account. So you do have to have both in order to, be able to, or to be able to see what you're seeing on the screen right now in the top right-hand corner. Otherwise, as Tracy said, you will just see an email address. You'll just see the, e you know, the email address listed up here. Uh, so so uh, that, that's true. And then you'll see a drop-down arrow, and you'll see this little drop-down space so that you can go ahead and access uh, the, your account privacy you know, policies, and then also sign out or adding an account to be able to use. So, uh, so also, the, the wonderful benefit of being able to use Gmail is that you can have multiple Gmail accounts, and you can add different accounts within this, within this screen. You can basically pair email accounts so that you can switch between them very easily. Google allows you to be able to do that without having to re-sign in to another account. You can just basically swap between the accounts as long as you've given each of those Gmail accounts appropriate access. So some people want to have a personal email account and a business email account, and this allows you to do that. So you just click on this Add Account, and that allows you to swap between the two. What I like to do is, of course, change the profile photo so that your, your picture appears in your personal and your business, or a picture associated with your business appears as the photo for the business email address so that you don't get you know, confused over which is which. Okay? So if you wanted to sign out of Gmail, you would go ahead and click on the Sign Out button. And then the next layer down, of course, next to the Gmail name, you have this drop-down menu where you can select various types of email. So you have all email, you have none, you have read, unread, star, starred, and unstarred email. These are each in order, of course, selecting all the email that currently you're showing in, in your current view, in this case, in the inbox label. 
Okay. So if, if your email is coming into the, all of your email comes in to your inbox label unless you have it to otherwise. And so uh, if you have your email sitting here in this inbox, I can click on all and everything here will be, will be shown. I'm just going to star one of these emails and now I'm going to jump down and I'm going to click on the starred. And what will happen is the selector will only select the one that I have starred. Okay? Very simple concept here. But you can go ahead and use that to great effect. The little circular icon here is just a refresh button. So if you believe that you've received email, it will go ahead and, and it's not showing, you can go ahead and press that button and it will resolve the screen. In general, Gmail is checking on a regular basis for new email in the background. Okay, and it, it runs on, on, on a system that doesn't have a specific amount of time that it's looking for email. It's just looking for new email and pushing it to you. So you may feel like it's in real time sometimes and then in not in real time in other times. That, that's not, your brain isn't playing tricks on you. It's just that Google looks for the, uh, the email that's coming in on its own schedule and as it's looking for those things, it's a sliding scale of time. So you will receive new email very quickly once it comes you know, once it comes to you, but, you know, if, it's, if it lags by five seconds or, you know, uh, 30 seconds or so, that's, that's not a problem. It, it's perfectly fine. So you'll see new email. If you just leave your email inbox uh, open, your, I'm sorry, your Gmail screen open, uh, things will come into your inbox, uh, you know, automatically. You don't need to click on refresh for them to come in, okay? If you click on the more drop-down button here, you'll see uh, that you have some options. Here you have mark all as red as the only option, but if I go ahead and select email, then when I go ahead and uh, click on the same more drop-down, you can see that I have more options. Google, of course, hides these additional icons unless I've selected email in my inbox. Basically, a lot of these tools that you're going to find as Google, as Google goes along in, in sort of being able to help make their screens more compact and, of course, more streamlined, uh, they're going to remove particular icons from view unless you're interacting with things. So whether you're interacting with a calendar item in Google Calendar or whether you're inside the inbox inside of Gmail, they're going to not give you particular options or features without you actually checking something or being inside somewhere. You know, so here in this case, if I don't have an email selected, those items disappear once I go ahead and click on it. I need to. I now have options that I can use. Now these options are this down arrow. This one basically uh, reassociates this email from the inbox label to the archive label. And the archive label doesn't have a folder or a collection or a label called archives. It's actually called all mail. And all mail is where all of your mail exists. So this is a little confusing for everyone, but it is literally all your mail, minus spam. So accepting spam, all of your mail should be viewable within all mail. That means when you click on archive, all it's doing is removing it from the inbox view. So it takes away the inbox label and doesn't appear in your inbox anymore, and it appears under all mail. Now, all mail will also show all of your inbox labeled items. It will show all of your starred items. It will show all of your your email that's labeled to any other particular label. So your, your, your archiving is, is really just removing it from your inbox. So it's taking it out of view, and it is technically archiving it in, in some sense. But from my perspective, it's just moving it to all mail, the all mail label, so that you can find all your mail there. Okay? But in general, I like to, uh, you know, of course, use the spam button regularly. So if I receive spam, this little stop sign with the exclamation point, the uh, octagon uh, with the exclamation point, is for marking something as spam. So if something is an unsolicited message that you want to go ahead and, and mark as spam, you can go ahead and click that button. Right to the right of that is a garbage can, and so you can click on that button to go ahead and, and mark something as uh, trash. Okay. So uh, if I click on this particular item, it disappears, and note that that message has now been moved to something called trash. Trash is a, a label. And it's a special label that Gmail has created, that, that Google created for you, so that you have uh, this, this temporary holding place that over time will purge itself. So every 30 days, once that email message reaches that date, it gets deleted and deleted forever. I mean, at that point, it is gone. So don't use your trash for, you know, as a temporary holding place to think about things. 
but you can you can rest assured that if it's less than 30 days old, it will stay there. It will be there until until that 30 day mark. But after 30 days, it disappears from that from that view. So uh, so that's trash. The next one over is the uh, labels. Uh, uh, sort of this is where things sort of get confusing here. Uh, Google is basically allowing you to to create new items and move things between labels, uh, but in essence, you are just uh, relabeling something. When they say move to, what they really mean is relabeling something. So in this case, if I wanted to be able to move this particular message to the spam label, it will remove this from the inbox. It will it will take away the inbox label and it will actually add the spam label, which will then put it in the spam folder. And then Google uses that to, you know, reinforce their algorithm that tells whether or not something is spam or not spam you know, something that's legitimate email that you want to receive or something that you don't want to. You can create new labels. So if I wanted to create a new label that was just related to W3 Consulting, I can go and do that. And I can even nest these under particular items so I can have a hierarchy of labels. Uh, so I can have a label under a label under a label and have sort of three tiers of labels going through there. So you can see that I've now uh, taken that conversation and moved it to W3 Consulting. All right, so now you can see here there's W3 Consulting, and that message appears there, and it's no longer appearing in the main inbox, okay? So that's just moving between labels. Then, of course, you can manage labels. That's managing labels for specific uh, conversation. In this case, they call them conversations, and I'll explain that when I actually uh, talk about this particular area down here. But if I wanted to, I could go ahead and if I had multiple labels here, I could go ahead and uh, create multiple labels and I can assign them to multiple labels. So if I go back here, I can create, oh, this is not the view I wanted. Hold on one second. Let's go back here. And I'm going to go ahead and create new. I'm going to create a new label. I'm going to call this one personal. And I'm going to create a new label as well that's called uh, uh, fun. All right, so you can see here I have these three different labels here, and I'm going to go back to the inbox, which is now empty. Let's just move these guys back to the inbox. And now you can see what just happened. So right here to the left of the subject line of the conversations that we're dealing with, you can see that this says W3 Consulting, this one says Personal, and this one says Fun. So when I uh, select these messages, I can go ahead and drop down on the labels icon, and you can see that each of these icons shows that I have three labels associated with three different conversations going on. Now this dash here that appears inside of the of the checkbox, inside the selector box, is has a dash, which means that not all of the messages selected adhere to this particular uh, to this particular label, which is important for me to know because if all of the messages are selected, see here where this selector box basically shows a checkbox. If all of the messages weren't uh, selected here, that would be a dash also. And so here it tells me, oh wait, I can't apply all to everything here without changing the label structure. Okay, so if I wanted to make all of these messages fun, I could go ahead and select it. It becomes a checkbox. I click apply, and now all of these messages are associated with the fun label. So again, see the difference between a physical file folder? I would have had to have taken those three pages, uh, you know, those three files, or those three conversations that I've, you know, three letters that I've written, made photostatic copies of those, and went, and went ahead and filed them in three different physical folders, one labeled W3 Consulting, one labeled Personal, and one labeled Fun. Now, with Gmail, I don't have to do that because I can just associate them all with fun. And they're the same exact email. You know, if you had Outlook or some other uh, email program, you would actually be uh, copying those emails and you'd be duplicating them in the same way. But Gmail removes that. It banishes that thought because you're now using the same exact core, you know, foundational email, the original email, just associated with different things. So you see them in different views. And again, here where you have the different labels, you can see that you have now three associated with fun and one and one uh, associated with the others. Okay, So really powerful tool here for being able to associate and create context. 
Uh, again, drop down here, you can go ahead and uh, under more, you have the ability to add to tasks a particular conversation. So click, unclick these items. Uh, notice I said under, in the beginning you have this sort of tasks function underneath uh, Gmail. You have Gmail contacts and tasks. Uh, I can turn any conversation into a task just by clicking add to tasks. I'm not going to talk about more of that today, but you can, you can go ahead and do that. And it will go ahead and add that to a task list that actually appears right here in the Gmail view. So you don't have to go anywhere else to manage your your day-to-day uh, -day tasks. You can do that right here in Gmail. And of course, you're removing another uh, item from your from your your email inbox, and that allows you to be able to reduce the overload as it relates to your inbox. Again, you can add stars uh, to an email. That's just a way of, you know. Uh, creating a context for you. So you, you decide what a star means to you, but you can go ahead and add a star. You can filter messages. We talked about filtering underneath the search uh, when we talked about the search field. And you can mute conversations. Now this is really great. So say for instance you see, uh, you know, you send a message to uh, 13 of your friends and or, you know, 13 business colleagues about a particular issue. And uh, you, you get that email and uh, you send that email, and everyone gets it, and then you know a deluge starts. You know uh, they all respond to the question, and that's great. You get your answer, and then all of a sudden the, the topic of the thread changes. They start talking about you know something that has nothing to do with uh, with what you originally sent the message about. Maybe they decided to talk about the conference that's coming up, and maybe some of the golf plans that they were going to have associated with the with the conference afterward. Uh, so uh, you go, oh my gosh, you know, I, I don't care about this right now. I don't, I don't want to deal with that. You can go ahead and click mute, and it will actually stop showing those uh, that conversation thread unless someone changes the subject. I'm sorry, the to line of the message to actually be to you. So if they if they ch if they go ahead and respond and put you in the to line, uh, they will go ahead and and so it will mute the conversation, meaning that you won't. It'll just go into all mail. It'll archive in essence that message, all of the messages that are in that thread, will go into the all mail and will not show up in your inbox unless somebody materially changes that 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 email to you and puts you in the to line. So it's really great for being able to to limit some of these. these sort of inane conversations that you don't want to be a part of. So use the mute function um, as much as you want. To. <laughs> I like I like using it. Uh, uh, Ray? So, uh, this little uh, feature here, yes? I'm sorry, going back to the task real quick, just to before we get too far away from it, um, you had a question, does a task yes. get added to the Gmail calendar? Uh, so, so Google Calendar? Uh, I, I'm guessing they're talking about Google Calendar. Yeah. There is no Gmail Calendar. Right. So, uh, so Google Calendar allows you to be able to to enable the tasks, uh, you know, within the Google Calendar. So you you can you can open up you know there'll be a little um, I think it's a little you know uh, uh, side panel, and the side panel will open up and show you those same exact tasks that appear within Gmail. So they are the same database. So yes. So the answer is when you add that task from from a conversation into a task within Gmail, it does appear in Google Calendar. Yeah. So here, as we move along to the, the number of messages in your inbox or in whichever label you're looking at, uh, it'll show you one of X of X, okay? So, or one to, you know, one to whatever the view is. So you can, you can have your view show 25, 50, 100 messages at a time. And uh, so you can see there uh, how many messages you currently have in view and then how many messages are actually in your uh, inbox label altogether. You can also jump to the newest and oldest of the messages by these drop-down menus. Of course, we don't have multiple screens here, so that's why they're grayed out. But if you had multiple screens, you know, if I had 400 emails sitting in my inbox, which I hope to never have, uh, you, can, you can then uh, go ahead and uh, see that you could jump to the oldest email by clicking on the oldest link. Okay? These two buttons take you from page to page. So if I had three pages of email, you know, if I had 75 emails sitting in my inbox, it would be able to take me through each set of 25 messages. Okay? So I could go ahead and take myself to newer and older pages of messages by that. There is the drop-down uh, gear, and this is for settings. 
The settings give you display density. Display density just means that the amount of space that is shown between different portions of the screen are changed based on that. So in this case, I'm in the comfortable setting, which means it gives me the most space between those things. Think of that as sort of an SUV. Uh, and then we go down to Cozy. Cozy is sort of a mid-size uh, vehicle, and it sort of you can see it sort of compacts things a little bit more. And then, of course, we go down to the compact car size, and that's where it basically makes the font size a little smaller. Everything sort of creeps up a little bit. And you can see we have lots more space uh, to work with. So if you're dealing with a smaller work screen, or if you have your, your uh, multiple monitors where you have multiple windows open at the same time, you might want to be able to compact the screen for different purposes. But in this case, we're just going to give ourselves lots of real estate right now. Jumping down, uh, this is the Compose, uh, the red Compose button. And the Compose button allows us to be able to go ahead and, and uh, compose a new message. You can see when you click Compose, it gives you a new screen. And the new screen gives you uh, the Send button, Save Now, which puts your message within your draft label. And what I like to do is that once in a while, I'm working on something, and it will, I will need to leave that particular item. Uh, well, you know, I might want to save that message, so I go ahead and type that message. Say I'm sending a message to myself, and the subject is the new task for, you know, new project for whatever it might be. So I type myself an email message, and now it's, it's, uh, it's ready, except I may not need to come back to it later. I go ahead and click Save Now, and that message goes and gets tagged to drafts. Okay, so now it's, it's labeled as a draft message, and it will only appear within drafts. Uh, just to jump out of this Compose screen just for a moment, you can see that if I, if I go into drafts and I click on my draft message, there's a, an option for me to be able, be able to move that draft message to my inbox so that I don't forget that I was in the midst of drafting the message. And, you know, when you have many email coming into your inbox, you may not may not notice that. So what I've done is I've marked this as an inbox item. It will still appear in drafts. This is sort of a special exception in the system. But it will still appear here in drafts. But it will also appear here in my inbox. And it's, it has a little red draft label. And so now I know that it's a draft message. And I can, when I come back into Gmail, I will know that where I left off because I've, I've got that draft message sitting there. So within the draft, you know, you click on Compose, you have Send, Save Now. Gmail consistently keeps saving messages as you update it. So uh, you, know, you want to make, make sure that you click Save Now if you, for some reason, believe your internet or your computer is, uh, is going to lose data for some reason, you shut down, whatever it might be. But make sure that you're consistently clicking Save Now. If it says Saved in gray, that means that it has everything saved that's currently in its state. You can go ahead and discard a message. Discarding means that you're deleting that draft message. And, uh, and, and nothing is saved from that. So don't think that it goes to your trash folder. When you click discard, it is gone. Okay? So this is not like deleting a, uh, an, an email that comes into your inbox. The, the message that you're drafting here is the only copy and will not be moved to a different view. So when you click discard, it really discards it. Okay? Next up is uh, labels. You can also uh, associate labels on outbound messages. This is really fantastic because when Google then goes ahead and uh, receives new email messages in response to this message, what it will do is then associate it with that same label. And now you can go ahead and create filters. And you can also have it, uh, you know, you have the, the labels appear in your inbox as uh, a, a visual representation of what the context is that you're dealing with. Uh, you know, I, I was just at a, at a seminar last evening, and the speaker was talking about email go figure, and uh, email inbox overload, actually, and the, and the, and the topic behind it. And, uh, and, and she talked about the idea that time, or the rec receive of email messages based on time, is a really poor context in which to manage email. Because the, the, the time in which you received an email is not necessarily the importance of it to you. It may be the importance of it to the person who sent it, but not to, the, not to you. So you have to take into account you know the the importance of that person, the importance of the of the context of the message, and the importance of the context of the message to you, and and your goals for today or the week or you know your lifetime, and so you have to go ahead and, and start thinking about contextualizing email so that you're not overloaded on a regular basis because the reality is is that the email will keep coming, uh, whether whether or not you like it. You know there's a there's a funny statistic about how uh, things will just fill the space in which 
you have, uh, you know, based on uh, on the amount of time or or space that you give it. It's called Parkinson's law, and uh, and and so you have this you have this ability to label things, especially on outbound messages. Uh, so go ahead and use the the labeling function here because it will really save you a lot of time and effort when you can see messages labeled coming inbound because you sent the message. And now you can immediately contextualize that as more or less important because of the label, not because it was received just now. Okay, so uh, so we have the ability to go ahead and draft. We can go ahead and uh, uh, write email. You want to do email in uh, the normal text format. You can then use a comma, and that will a comma and then a space will give you uh, the ability to add multiple recipients. You can add CC and BCC lines to your email, so you can go ahead and. Uh, copy people openly, and you can also blind copy people uh, on the, on the messages as well. Okay, if you wanted to open up this message uh, in a new window, there's this little uh, up upper right hand corner pointing arrow uh, within this little black icon, and that will open up this in a new window. Okay, uh, subject is here. You can type in your subject, and you can attach files. Okay, so you can attach files here uh, as you'd like. You have some basic formatting tools here where you can, uh, of course, bold, italicize, outline, change colors, change background uh, of text you know, for highlighting text, uh, provide links within the email, number, bullet, and so on and so forth. And then, of course, you can also change things uh, to and from plain text to rich text formatting. You can also check spelling, and uh, you can change the language that you're natively using for text uh, spell checking. Okay. Uh, so that's that's uh, that's the compose function screen. If anybody has any questions, feel free to go ahead and ask. I'm going to go ahead and discard that message, and uh, that takes us to this left-hand navigation panel, which you've seen me sort of playing around with over the course of showing you around the display screen and and sort of ex uh, talking about different functions. So here we have the uh, the inbox label, and these are pretty much all of your major labels. These top uh, five labels uh, typically cannot be moved without you modifying the the system. Uh, so, so here, these top five items are are special in different ways, just like the draft folder is special, and the and the all mail functions differently, and the trash functions differently than a label that you would create. Okay, so the inbox is special because the inbox is where you receive your email. Okay, uh, but if you drop down to it, it gives you, uh, as you can see, five different new, uh, well, four different new kinds of email inbox views or they call them inbox types. So in this case, you have the classic inbox, which means your most recent messages show up at the top. OK? Really simple. Next one down is your important first. That means what Google does is it shows the most important messages that you've received first. Well, what's most important? Google looks at that as the emails that you've opened the most. So it learns over time that if you uh, interact with uh, particular people, then it uh, then you know it it, it uh, I'm sorry if you interact with a particular email that means you open this particular email message all the time then it will go ahead and and presume that that message is more important the next time it comes so if you keep opening up particular messages those will show up in the important first area okay uh, those are also labeled with a little tiny uh, yellow ish uh, tag that sort of points at the at the conversation and you can turn that on and off so you can actually educate the system about whether something's important or not by that little by that little item next one down is unread first so it can take all of your unread me unread messages and put them at the top of your inbox and then everything else below that okay next one is starred first so if you were uh, in a in a in a place where you created filters that automatically starred messages say for instance you star a message from your uh, accountant all of the messages that come from your accountant get starred. Well, the starred first t inbox type would always put those accountants' messages at the top. Or if your customers, you know, you, if you have a regular set of customers and you know all their email addresses, you could create a filter that says, you know, all of these customers, when they send me an email message, their, theirs gets a star, and those stars get filtered to the top of the, the inbox by using the inbox type star first, starred first. Then priority inbox. Priority inbox is actually a combination of your unread messages, important, and starred inboxes. Okay, and they show them in different particular views. But the ones that are considered uh, priority inbox in, uh, of importance uses an, an additional algorithm that basically looks at the number of times you've had communications with particular contexts, very similar to the important uh, first view. 
and then of course you know splits out some of the other items as well. So start items, although you might have had lots of communications with those people, get, gets removed if you've had uh, if you've added that star or created a filter that added the star, and those get put in their own separate view. Same thing about uh, the unread items; they get they get uh, put into a particular view, and then you have everything else below that. Okay, so those are those are just the, the sort of interesting ways in which you can sort of look at email uh, using the the inbox system. Uh, not perfect, but certainly is very very helpful when trying to become more efficient about dealing with particular email. You know, there's four different things that you can do with an email. You can do something to it, you know, which is to uh, reply or forward that email. You can then delete it. You can delegate it, and you can also defer it to a later time, which is, you know, putting it, leaving it in your inbox or associating it with a label and doing something later with that. So, you know, do, delegate, delete, and defer are the four, four you know, actions you can take on any email, and you want to be able to make that association and that efficiency work within your context. And so the particular inbox type you're using sometimes helps you with that. Okay? So these views, starred, important, uh, sent, and then drafts, we've talked about those. So the sent mail folder for me is a, is a folder that I view, uh, review regularly. It helps me uh, you know, review messages that I've sent in the prior week that might not have been responded to. And so this particular view is very good for being able to follow up with people and making sure that something that you're waiting for uh, is something that you receive in a timely fashion for, uh, for completing projects. Uh, Circles is actually connected to Google+, and so if you don't have a Google Plus uh, uh, profile, this won't appear, but you can see here that you can associate your circles with email as well. So you can see uh, filtered uh, to see who is using what and where uh, in terms of uh, uh, email with you within these circles. And you can see here that you can go ahead and edit circles and show and hide them within the system. Okay. Uh, again, if you uh, if you notice that the view only shows uh, sort of the top few items and then it cuts it off and you have this more button. If you if you uh, scroll down, then uh, click on the more button, you see that it scrolls down and and and, and shows you uh, chats, uh, all mail, which is the special you know view that shows you everything. And if we click on that, you can see that it shows us everything, you know, things that are in the inbox, all the messages that are tagged with messages that are tagged personal, and all the messages that are tagged with W3 Consulting. Okay? Uh, you can see your spam folder, your trash folder, and you can manage labels and create labels from this view as well. They give you lots of options in terms of creating and managing those labels from different views, as you can see. So uh, if, if, we, uh, if we let that shrink back up, you can see that we have a chat functionality. Basically, any contact who is also a Gmail user will allow you to be able to chat with them. Now, uh, your status here, you can go ahead and change. Literally, you can consistently change it as many times as you want, and it'll just keep doing that. And uh, you can also change your status from available to busy and away. Now, you'll note that this, uh, this system shows not only the color, green, a red with a minus sign and then a gray little X. At one time, Google did not do that, and a large portion of the of the population is red, green, colorblind, and so the little green and red dots were actually useless <laughs> to uh, people who were red, green, colorblind. Uh, one in four males, for instance, are red, green, colorblind. So, uh, if you look to the left and right of you, if you're sitting in a crowd, uh, you know uh, every every fourth male to the left or right of you is probably col red, green, colorblind and may not even know it. Uh, but the uh, but so Google went ahead and updated this after much complaining from uh, not only myself I'm not red green colorblind but I do know people who are and uh, and and other users and now you can see that if if you uh, look closely there is a um, a dash for for those that are away you know or busy uh, setting uh, status setting and then of course the X which shows that you're invisible. Okay, so uh, so that's that's the chat functionality. The chat functionality is pretty simple, uh, but we'll go ahead and talk about that uh, in more depth when we talk about uh, Google Talk and uh, in, an, in another, in another uh, webinar. So we have the chat functionality. There's the call phone. Again, we'll talk about that when we talk about Google Voice and its connection to telecommunications, but you can actually uh, make phone calls uh, from this system uh, and, and also send and receive SMS messages from the Gmail system if you're if you're using it accor accordingly. All right, so here we have this 
inbox, and uh, you know we have this view, and we're looking at the inbox, and these are called conversations. Okay, and you probably heard me say this earlier as we were talking. So here goes a conversation, this particular one: customize Gmail with colors and themes. So I'm going to click on this message, and it's going to open up the email message, and this is the first time I'm getting to show you just the regular email message that we've received. And Google, of course, has provided us with a little bit of HTML, and you can see that it's provided HTML to us. The subject line is up here. Next to that is the important or not important button to teach Gmail whether or not that conversation is important. If I click on it, that message has now been marked as important, and that helps the algorithm that shows the inbox type views. Okay, I'm going to uncheck it because it's not important. I can remove items from the uh, from labels from a particular conversation, so I can remove this from the inbox just by clicking on the the uh, X next to the label, and uh, and I can do that with uh, with all the others as well. I can I can toggle them on and off. There's a print button, so I can print the message. I I can also open messages in new, new windows. Uh, here I can drop down and see to and from information and some other uh, header information. And so that can show me some more, uh, more detailed information about the sender and recipient of that particular message. This shows me here, and I love seeing this. It tells me how long ago I received a particular message and the time and date stamp for that particular message. I can star the message right to the right of that. And then I can also go ahead and reply drop down and forward, and then do all sorts of fun other drop down items that are associated with that. A lot of them are the ones that I just talked about. So uh, you can go ahead and, and, and do that. If you've received an email for the first time, this is really important. Gmail automatically adds people to uh, a sort of special contacts list for you. And it doesn't add, automatically add it to your, your uh, My Contacts list within Google Contacts which we'll talk about in a later webinar as well. But this uh, contacts list, you can see it says add Gmail team to contacts list. That's a special uh, categorization when you add them to a contacts list because it's actually adding it to your contacts specifically. If you continue to email with the Gmail team in this particular case, it would automatically add it to the all contacts so that it would be in your inbox when you when, or in your compose screen when you started typing a message, it would pop up. But in essence, it's not really part of your context for uh, purposes of, of having a first name and last name and, and information about that individual to connect to other services. So it is a spe special way of connecting. Uh, so note that that add Gmail to contacts item is important. Okay. Uh, if you see uh, various items down here, you can see that you know if a message is garbled, uh, you can go ahead and have that. If the message is in another language, you can go ahead and have Google uh, translate that message for you as well there. So, uh, so that's the, the primary screens there. I'm going to just jump into settings for the next couple minutes, and then we'll do questions. Uh, so settings is this huge area of, of Gmail, and it allows you to do so many different things. And I'm just going to give a smattering of the most important ones. Under the general, just gives you the general view of the inbox and conversation views. Okay. It also gives you the ability to create signatures. Uh, so if you wanted a signature in your messages, you can go ahead and have signatures. Okay. Signatures are great. You can also have vacation responders so that if you're going on vacation, you can go ahead and do that and, uh, and set that up to do that. Labels, you can manage labels from this main uh, manage label screen. And uh, you can also click on manage labels from any of those drop down menus. And it'll take you to this screen as well. Okay. So notice you can, you can manage the system labels. And you can also manage the circles and then your, then your regular labels. All right. But notice that you cannot delete. The system labels, they are permanent, but you can show or hide them in particular areas. So for instance, if I don't want to see uh, starred ones, you can see that starred was there and now it's gone. And I can also uh, hide or show particular labels as necessary. Account and imports. For instance, if you have an e a business email and you want to be able to, to be able to access it from anywhere, including mobile phone and a Gmail app on a smartphone or something like that, you can go ahead and import your mail from a particular account and access all of that email from the Gmail inbox. You can also respond from Gmail, but as your business email address. Excuse me. So you can go ahead and add email to come inbound only. You can have email go outbound only, or both. Okay. So you have you have ultimate control over whether or not you're receiving or sending email from from uh, from a particular email address. You can also set so that whenever you respond from a message that's from your work, it will respond from that work address so that it always 
retains that continuity of view. All right, so lots of lots of control over here in terms of uh, of being able to pull in pop messages from uh, from other accounts. Okay, I believe you can have up to five accounts that you manage from within one Gmail account. Filters. This is where you go ahead and manage and, and deal with filters. Then there's forwarding at POP and IMAP. Okay, you can enable POP and IMAP services within Gmail. My recommendation is to disable POP. There's no reason to have it anymore. Uh, but uh, you know, there are some people who probably will argue with me over that one. But I'm 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 almost uh, adamant about POP being a, a legacy technology, and we don't need it anymore. You can add forwarding email addresses. So if you wanted to forward particular messages based on a filter, uh, you can forward those messages to particular addresses. So you have to verify those addresses now. You just can't forward them to anyone. So you do have to have control over that email address in order to receive the email there. But you can forward messages to other email inboxes as necessary. You can have IMAP service. IMAP is sort of the, the, uh, the older, you know, well, the newer and more advanced sibling of POP technology. And that allows for seamless view of, of email and no matter what the, the changes are to one email inbox, all of your email inbox in the different places where you might access it are the same. So if you're going to enable a service, I would enable IMAP and use the IMAP service uh, specifically. This gives you all the options regarding IMAP, but that's IMAP. So if you have multiple, you know, if a desktop client, maybe you're using Outlook at the office, but on your laptop you just want to access, access it by the web and you want to be able to get your phone messages you would go ahead and enable IMAP and then use the IMAP settings on both of those devices to be able to access your Gmail inbox. Uh, chat, we're not going to talk about that. We'll talk about that when we get to Google Talk. Uh, under Web Clips, Web Clips is just one of those views that uh, shows above your inbox these little snippets from various websites which you can add or delete along the way. That's pretty useless to me, so I'm, we're going to pass over that. You can play around with it. And then uh, here is Gmail Labs. And Gmail Labs is a really, really great product for being able to play with a number of different things. And uh, so I recommend going ahead and playing in, in, in and around the Gmail Labs and uh, seeing which items might be of interest to you. Uh, and then uh, there's Gmail Offline. Gmail Offline requires you to be using Google Chrome, I believe, in order to be able to allow that to happen. Uh, and then, of course, you can change uh, themes. So that is Gmail in a nutshell, so you can change the view of, of things using themes. And uh, Tracy, do you want to just take over with questions? People sure. Might have? Sure. We've got a few questions up there. Um, first, uh, what's the hashtag again? Google too great. Okay. And um, so there was a question about uh, labels. Is removing the inbox label from an email equivalent to selecting the archive button? Is removing the inbox label? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And how can I use this with my iPhone in regards with the address, contacts, and notes for that? Do I need to buy an iPhone add-on? No. So uh, Google takes you through uh, some on how to use the Google service with your iPhone. You'll you'll just have to Google it and. Uh, Go figure, and you'll have to go ahead and just look for uh, using using uh, mail on the iPhone for Gmail. And basically, what you're going to do is you're going to list uh, Google's email server when you set up your uh, your IMAP service. Okay, so uh, when you go into when you go into the iPhone into the general settings, uh, at least all of the operating systems to date, you will click on settings, click on uh, mail, you know, mail contacts and calendars. It'll give you the ability to go ahead and select uh, a Gmail account to create. You'll go ahead and create that, and it'll give you an option to be able to use the three different services: Gmail, contacts, and calendars. And then it'll go ahead and give you access to those on the iPhone. Well, great. Well, there aren't any other questions, so I wanted to thank everyone for participating today. A few household items. Today's webinar uh, was recorded, and it'll be posted on the Virginia SBDC website, virginiasbdc.org, under online training. Uh, tomorrow, you'll be receiving a follow-up email on this webinar, and there's going to be an evaluation link in that email. Please help us to improve our training by taking the time to complete the evaluation. If you want to complete the evaluation now, I put a link up in the chat field so you can do that. But uh, thank you, Ray. It was uh, very helpful. Um, and 
Oh, I'm sorry. We do have one last question. Now people are asking questions. Oh, sure. <laughs> sure. Wait, don't stop. Um, in Outlook, as you compose a message, you can mark something, mark some, like it in Gmail. I'm not sure the question. Uh, in Outlook, as yeah, you compose, oh, in Outlook, okay. in you can compose a message as urgent as you compose as you compose it. Can you do that in Gmail? Uh, so, so they want to mark something with urgency outbound. So if you're in the compose screen, you, you want to be able to mark something as urgent, important, or otherwise? No, there's no, there's no, um, there's no uh, option for that, no. Okay. And then the other... You can, you can put it, you can put in, you can put in the subject line, you know, that, that it's, that it's urgent, but don't put all caps because it will, uh, that will increase its rate of being picked up by the spam filter. Okay. Um, and what about using an address book? What does that mean? Um, uh, in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, where your address book lies? I'm not sure, your, but... Your address book is called, your, your address book is called Contacts within Gmail. So if you click on the down arrow next to Gmail here in the top left-hand corner, you're going to be taken to Contacts. And we'll, we'll have an, actually a whole webinar based on contacts and, and how it works. Uh, but this is where your contacts are. And you can see it's a brand new account, so there are no contacts. Uh, but contacts gives you a whole host of, of different options. But this is where your contacts are. Gmail really doesn't need you to manage much in that regard because it basically is managing it in the background for you. Okay. Well, thank you, Ray. And we'll see you on July 5th for our next webinar, Managing Your Time and Teams Using Google. Thank you, everyone. Take care.